The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmed will be the one ruler of the Romans. E. Saw. What do you get out of E. Saw? Now, E. Saw is going into Isa and Saw. It is going into the parables, the parables. This is going into the two calves. Now, Jeroboam was a king who, out of fear, created two calves for the people to worship instead of them going to the one and only true God to celebrate the high holy day. Out of his fear, he created two gods, two false gods, and that is the basis of Christianity. Now, E saw two names, Esau and Saul. Now, this is seen in the real Injil that is the Gospel of Joshua. Ironically, Christians stay away from the book of Joshua when it's written by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is an authentic book in the Hebrew language. And in Joshua 6.26, this is ancient Christianity. Let's get that. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Now this is going into two beloved sons. There's nothing new under the sun. Think about the two sons who were beloved. The first one was Joseph. He is a picture of Christ. The second one was Benjamin. That's a picture of Paul. Now these were the two sons who had the same mama, Rachel. These two sons were beloved to Jacob. Now Jacob is going into a metaphor because Jacob, his name means one who supplants or deceives. Now, the two sons that Satan loved to use on planet Earth was the prophet Isa and Paul. But see, this is the thing. The prophet Isa broke away from that religion. And this will be seen in the future when he comes back as a just ruler and he destroys Paul's religion, which is the cross. Now, don't run. I'm going to break down Esau for you. Now, remember, I told you, Esau or Esau is going into the prophet Esau and is going into Saul. Now, the firstborn is the foundation of the Christian church. And this is the prophet Esau. But this is the reason why God destroyed the firstborn of Pharaoh because the religion of Pharaoh was ancient Christianity. Think about Pharaoh and his son. They both were considered gods. And this is a picture of the two calves that God will destroy. He's going to cause the prophet Esau to die a supernatural death in the future. Now, we know it's going to be natural, but it's going to be supernatural. Because God Almighty is going to cause the prophet Isa to die. And Jesus, peace be upon him, having a supernatural birth is going into how everybody thought he was God. But he's going to have a natural death in the fact that when he dies, everybody will know that Jesus is no God. Now, Setting up the gates will be done by the younger son. This is going into the master. This is going into the rabbi. This is going into the father, the man with the fur of the Christian church. 
and that is Paul. He is from the tribe of Benjamin. He is the wolf that Jesus warned us about who will come after him. He's going to set up the gates. You know why? Because he has a prison named after him. And that is Paul. In the Arabic tongue, it is pronounced Bulas. Now, I'm trying to get my pronunciations right. For my Muslim brothers, they probably could correct me and, and let me know if I'm pronouncing it right. But I've heard it said Bulas. And that actually means Paul. Paul has a prison named after him. Now, that is seen in the book of Luke 16. The rich man and the poor man. The rich man was a picture of Paul. He is the man with all of the flocks, all of the herds. This is going into all of these churches. He is a picture of John the Baptist, the man with all the churches. And the poor man is Christ. He is the one who was laying in Abraham's bosom, just like John was laying in Christ's bosom. This is the poor man who had no place to lay his head because his inheritance was stolen by Paul. So going back to Esau, this is going into two calves. This is going into the pair of balls. Now when I say ball, 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 ball. B-A-A-Ls, I'm, I'm saying the two false gods. Jesus is no God and Paul is is no God. This is the reason why Jesus spoke in parables. Think about Joseph. He spoke to his brothers through an interpreter. And this is going into how Joseph was swearing by the life of Pharaoh and the prophet Esau was swearing by the life of Paul. Why? Because Paul was the father of the Christian church. Now, let's keep going on these two Gods. Now, remember Jesus said, I and my Father is one. Remember Jesus said, he that have seen me have seen the Father. Remember Jesus said, he that honors me must honor me like he honors my Father. Now, all of these references, including before Abraham was I am, is going into the false Abraham and it is going into Paul. You see, in your Bible, in the first book of Corinthians 4.15, we have a man who calls himself the father of the Christian church. Now, one thing I've learned is that Christians do not recognize Paul as their father, even though their Bible says it. Now, I want to read it real quick because a lot of Christians are in the dark. I had one man tell me, who told you that Paul is the father in Christ Jesus? I said, your own Bible. <laughs> and he got raptured for three days. They always disappear when the truth come out in the comments. And then he tried to twist the whole thing. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 4, 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have fathered you. Or I have become your father through the Gospels. So this is that father and son religion. Now Jesus is called the son of God by himself. He said that. He called himself the son of God only one time. But he also identified as the son of man. Now the son of man and the son of God is all going into being a son of Paul. Now this was the mystery that was hidden. From the foundations of the world. That Christ was a son of Paul. Christ had to suffer the curse of Canaan. And that was Ham. He seen his father's nakedness. And his son was cursed as a result of it. Now that is the real truth. So this father and son religion. Is what we call Christianity. And it is ancient. Remember Paul. And how he was seen in the life of Achan. Now, Achan is going into Bulas. This is Mr. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Now, let's go to Joshua 7.4. And I'm going to show you how Achan or Achan. This is also going into a con artist. A false prophet. Get it? P-R-O-F-I-T. A religious scam. Okay. All of this stuff 
is coming from Mr. Akon. This is going to be Joshua 7 and 4. So there went up thither other people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men. For they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabaram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. You see, the truth about Paul has been hidden for eons and eons. But right here in the house of David, this unique ministry, the truth about Paul is coming out. Going on, verse 20, and Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Now, you're going to learn that Paul is Saul, okay? That's why he's about to say this right now. Watch this. Verse 21, when I saw, see, this is all going into Saul. And I want to pause real quick and I want to come back because remember how Saul was so jealous at King David. And this is going to be in 1 Samuel 18 and 6. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And Saul was very wrong. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? You see, the kingdom is going to go from the Christians to the Muslims. Oh, I know you mad, because we have a real religion. Your religion worships Mary. Your religion worships Saul. Your religion worships Jesus as God. But right here in the house of David, we worship the one and only true God. And right here when it says Saul has slain his thousands, that's going into how the Christians have killed thousands of the Arabians. But the Arabians have killed tens and thousands of the Christians because there's coming a day when God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. You see the church had it all wrong. Jesus did not die for the church. The church will die for Jesus and the church will die for the Muslims. But going on in verse 9, and Saul eyed David. See, Saul saw, S-A-W, he saw something. Saul eyed David from that day and that day forward. You see, Saul saw the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, coming in Arabia, in Mecca, with ten thousands of saints. And that's why he got mad. He got mad at the ten thousands because Paul wanted to be this guy. Yes, he did. And I'm going to show you how Saul saw Islam in the future and he cursed it. Now, this is common knowledge amongst the Christians. Galatians 1 and 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be a curse so right here Saul or Paul saw Islam in the future and he cursed it just like he saw Islam in the future and got all mad and got jealous because the prophet Muhammad is the one who came along with the ten thousands you see David was a picture of the prophet Muhammad they both were shepherds okay they both hid in caves they both had issues and reproaches with women okay the prophet David was famous for the ten thousands and the prophet Muhammad peace be upon them both was famous for the ten thousands now that's the truth you cannot refute now let's go back to Joshua and let's go to verse 21 and it's going to give you them same words I saw and Joshua 721 when I saw 
See, there you go. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent in the silver under it. So this is going into the con artist. This is going into Paul trying his best to steal the mantle which belonged to the prophet Isa. You see, Jacob stole his brother's inheritance. And this is going into how Paul stole the prophet Isa's inheritance. Okay, there's nothing new under the sun and it's constantly being repeated over and over. History simply repeats itself. Now let's go back to Esau. Esau is a blend. It's going into Christianity. It's going into the father and son religion. It's going into the curse of Canaan. It is ultimately going all the way back to the golden calves that Jeroboam substituted for the one true God of Israel. You see, Christians, they don't believe in worshiping one God, okay? And the people who hate Islam do not believe in worshiping the one and only true God because what makes you mad about Islam is that we believe in worshiping one God, not two, okay? Not the dos. We believe in worshiping one God and Esau is going into the prophet Esau and Saul's religion, which is called Christianity. Because Saul saw what the prophet Isa was going to be the Messiah of. And that is the religion of Islam. You see, he saw that. And so he stole Jesus from the religion of Islam. And he put him in Christianity. Because he saw. His name is Saul. He's all about seeing. He saw Islam in the future and cursed it. He saw the ten thousands in the days of David and he got mad. Okay. And he saw that Jesus was the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. And he stole him from the religion of Islam and he put him in the religion of Christianity. This is the source of Christianity's success. It's all going to the air. And that is the prophet Esau. So now you can see Esau with new eyes. Now our brothers in the Israelite camps are dumb. They don't see the truth. They think that Esau is just white, white, white people. No, Esau is going into a religion. That's why God says he loved Jacob and he hated Esau. He hates that two calf religion we call Christianity. It's not just going into black and white and black and white. No, because according to Ecclesiasticus, God tells us that he doesn't hate his creation, that he doesn't hate anything he made. Why would he make it if he hates it? This is going into the hatred that God has for Esau, and that is going into the two calves, that is going into the two God religion. Even Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. For he will love one and he will hate the other. Christianity is all about worshiping two masters whom they call the father and whom they call the son. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.